So, royalists and pensions, pensioners, how many freezing old people is King Charles worth? How many pensioners should have to shiver through the winter to ensure His Highness can continue to live a fairy tale existence of publicly funded pleasure? A couple of hundred? A couple of hundred freezing old people, is that enough? A few thousand pensioners. 10,000 80 year olds, 100,000 more, more pensioners? Well, yes, the answer is actually more, but that's only if we view the situation through the lens of the King's latest pay rise, which is what we're about to do. Because the papers let slip this week, with hardly any fanfare at all, that King Charles has uh, won a huge pay rise in percentage terms. It dwarfs what Aslef has won for train drivers and what the BMA has done for doctors, as Chaz is going to trouser an astonishing 50% pay rise this year, equating to £45 million extra in hard cash. That would keep 155,000 80-year-old pensioners... It would keep their winter fuel allowance of £300. 150,000 pensioners could keep their winter fuel allowance if King Charles didn't have a 50% pay rise. It's not a bad increase either, really, is it? Uh, it, it you know, the King has seen a huge profit of, uh, of £1.1 billion from his Crown estate, a percentage of which funds the monarchy, which means the sovereign grant, which supports the official duties of the royal family, will rise from £86 million this year to £132 million next. Not a bad increase, particularly when, you know, Charles is brushed with cancer and, of course, his daughter-in-law, Kate, have meant the royals have been cutting back on their official duties. 2,300 appearances this year compared with 2,700 the year before. A 50% pay rise for 15% less work. It's a nice gig if you can get it, and not a word of criticism from the same MPs who are happy to deny pensioners their winter fuel allowance. Not a word. Oh, don't be so churlish, Matthew. Charles hasn't been well, and Buckingham, Buckingham Palace Buckhouse, it needs a lot of renovation work. OK, fine. Points taken. But when my mate Mick was dying of cancer, he didn't get a 50% increase in his pension, nor did he get financial help improving his housing. Indeed, almost half of everyone who gets cancer has to continue working to make ends meet. But of course, not our king. And once again, I'm shocked, shocked, I tell you, to see what a nation of obedient serfs we are, just sucking this up. Charles, as I said, seen Crown Estate profits double to 1.1 billion. That's up from 443 million the previous year, driven by proceeds from the sale of options and leases on offshore wind projects on the seabed, because the king. Uh, the Crown, the Crown Estate, owns the seabed and therefore has responsibility for auctioning off wind, offshore wind rights. Can't be right, can it? That's such a huge pay rise when pensioners... We've been told by the new government that basically we're getting more austerity, that, that pensioners are going to have to go without their winter fuel allowance so that we can repair one of seven palaces that the royal family inhabit. Seven palaces... Why doesn't he pay for it himself? Why is there any public money going into this? 0345 973 I'd love to hear from any pensioners out there whether you're happy to shiver your way through the, uh, the winter knowing that King Charles's palace, Buckingham Palace, is going to be restored and that he's got a 50% pay rise. I'd love to know how you feel about that. Right chuffed, some of you. Very angry, perhaps more. 0345 973 the number. Well, Jack Royston is Chief Royal Cor Correspondent at Newsweek, and I'm going to go to him first for some guidance. Good morning to you, Jack. Good morning, good morning. Thank good you morning. for having me on. My pleasure, my pleasure. Now, obviously, it's, it's not all going to go straight into King Charles's pockets, but just in terms of sort of metrics, it doesn't look good, does it, that we're depriving pensioners of their winter fuel allowance and giving a king a 50% rise? No, it, it, it doesn't look good. There's a few caveats, I think, that are yes. important to make. So what has happened here is that, you, like you said, because, he, because the Crown Estate, which is a public asset, owns huge swathes of the seabed, that's where all the offshore wind was put. You know, the re renewable energy market has gone absolutely through the roof, and that has meant that the king now has an embarrassingly large amount of cash because mm. he isn't given a kind of... A spe he isn't given a specified amount of money each year. He's given a percentage of the profits of the Crown Estate, and the rest of those profits go to the government to fund schools, hospitals, hypothetically, potentially the winter fuel allowance. So it is, it's embarrassing for him. 
Um, there is some talk that down the line they're going to have to change this, possibly yeah, 26, year, 27. Even, yeah. They're going to have to bring in yeah, new laws to make sure that he, he gets a lower amount of money because it's more, than the, it's more than the royal family need. But there is also a broader issue, which I think your debate speaks to, which is that the royal family are going to have to work really very, very, very hard to try to show the British public that they are deserving of their power and wealth in society in the years to come because it's not just pensioners. Young people in Britain well as well have a well very said. difficult road ahead of them. The, cor- the, the day, coronation, we, he paid 10% of the coronation costs. The taxpayer, we pay 90%. Just when I mean, he's got profits of £1.1 billion. Pounds. I mean, it just... I mean, I am a Republican, OK? I mean, everyone knows that. But, I mean, it doesn't sit well. And the the younger generation of today have a particular view of power and privilege, inherited wealth, inherited power and privilege, which is rooted in the fact that they have a very difficult life ahead of them. They have a lot of climate anxiety, yeah, but yeah. they also have uh, they have AI coming down the line, which yeah. is going to take a lot of jobs. They're going to live very, very difficult lives with the cost of living going up harder than ever to get on the housing market. And this is the generation of people who increasingly are turning against the monarchy. You know, we've had polling out just this week showing that more than 50% of uh, Gen Z of kind of 18 to 24 year olds uh, have a negative view of the monarchy. I didn't see um, that. I That's think... very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, and so I think what the royals are going to have to look at, I mean, the, this actual specific issue of the money they get paid from offshore wind is quite difficult for them to deal with, because apart from anything else, once the law has to be changed by the government, yeah. they can't change it themselves. And even once it's changed, they have no control over where the money goes once it's back in public coffers. Uh, but they also have two other property estates. Like the, the Crown Estate is the one that is kind of actually owned by us. Um, yeah. and it's, I think it is very important... Bit. The Duchy of Cornwall with Prince Williams was yeah. Charles's, but it passed to Prince William when the Queen died. And then the Duchy of Lancaster funds the King and um, the and Queen Camilla and other royals. So they have these two other very lucrative uh, property sectors. I think they have a collective value of something like one point. Billion, I think it is. Uh, forgive me for having not got the figure at the tip of my mind. Um, but they need to start working how they can use some of those funds in a way that really shows the public that they understand how hard life is becoming mm. for people. Actually, both both pensioners and you know the oldest and the youngest are the are the generations that are getting squeezed the most at the moment. Um, one thing as well that I think you know Charles has had this long-standing ambition going back decades that he you know he needs the monarchy needs to slim down the monarchy in terms of the actual number of royals who appear on the Buckingham Palace balcony or who do jobs as working royals. But for me, I've never really been aware of anybody caring about that. But I think when the public <laughs> think about royal wealth, they don't think of the number of royals. They think of the number of residences. They think of the number well of said. helicopter well flights. Said. They think of private jets. And so I think these are the things that the monarchy needs to focus on. I think residences could be a really particularly big one for them to look at because they do you know they have Sandringham which they only use really uh, over Christmas and New Year maybe a little bit in you know kind of winter spring and then you know they have Balmoral which is they use in the summer um, but then they have you know Charles has uh, has property in Wales there's Highgrove in the west of England you know there are a lot of houses yeah. Yeah. And they also, you know, they all have to be looked after, you know, all, all year round in order that they don't go to wreck and ruin. So that's something that they could look at. I mean, you know, if they, if they were to perhaps sell one really big, famous property and invest the money in tackling homelessness, for example, yes. or helping with the winter yeah. fuel allowance or something Jack, like that. Jack, they need someone like you. Stuff. You need to give up your work at Newsweek and start giving them some counsel, I think. Jack Royston, pleasure talking to you. I, I will pay more attention to Royal Reports on Newsweek as a consequence. Uh, listening to that, uh, Richard Murphy, political economist, director of Tax Research UK, professor of accounting practice at uh, the Sheffield University Management School. Good morning to you, Richard. Lovely talking to you. Um, it's, am I being am I being unfair here that to contrast the plight of freezing pensioners with a single king? Well, as a pensioner who has lost out on his winter fuel allowance, I could feel a little bit annoyed about this because um, I am a mm. pensioner. I'm still at work, like so many now are. 
Um, but that doesn't stop me saying this feels horribly unfair for those many pensioners, and there are millions of them who will now lose the winter fuel allowance who did really depend upon it. But that's not the key issue here. Let's just stand back a little bit. Right. I'm no big fan of royalty. Let's be honest as well. You have been, I will be, I'll lay my cards on the table. I've been a member of a Republican organisation since about 1988. So I'm quite clear about that. Yeah. But if the people of this country want a monarchy, OK, I can live with there being a monarchy, but not one that, for example, does benefit in the way that our current monarchy is. It is absolutely ludicrous that the edge of the UK, the water lines and the seabeds are owned <laughs> by the crown. It's bizarre, isn't Why it? Why on bizarre. earth is it yeah, why is the beach the property, once it's met, met the tide mark, why is the beach the property of King Charles? Why does he get the benefit of the fact that we're all moving green and there's going to be a lot more work done on the seabed to generate more energy? That makes absolutely zero sense at all. It says that we live in a society which values wealth and which values inheritance and which is fundamentally eugenic, saying that he has a right by birth to this much more than it values any young person, any person of talent, any person doing anything in this country, because he gets this by right. Other people have to work for it. And that is at the very core of what is wrong with the values in our society. Yeah, I don't mind Prince Charles, sorry, he's not yeah, Prince Charles, not... King Charles, yeah. Prince William being paid for the work they do. I really don't mind if they're doing a valuable job, and I don't even mind if they're well paid for it. But well pay is, what, a million a year? Come on, guys, if you can't live on that, what are you doing? What evidence are you showing that you're in touch with the country you're supposedly out of state for? So this makes no sense. But let's come back to the core of this. We should not now have the Duchy of Cornwall paying for Prince William. The Duchy of Cornwall is deeply resented by many people that I happen to know, and some of whom I once represented as accountants when I was working as a uh, working accountant in Cornwall itself, because they resented having a landlord who was called the Prince of Wales. They resented the fact that they were actually having to pay for the fact that they lived in this area and were therefore supporting the monarchy. The Duchy of Lancaster, we've just heard mentioned, why should that also be made available to the monarchy? It's not just that we're talking about the profits of the Crown of State, which are expected to be £132 million pounds next year, but we've got these other estates as well. Yes. It's time that this money was public property. It's time that if the royalty is to survive, they became working royals, as they would like to call themselves. In other words, they get a salary for what they do. And no, they don't need seven palaces. No, Six of don't. those could quite happily pass over into the public, become museums, whatever else, national trust properties, and be you know, used for other purposes, or, as was said, in some cases, frankly, be sold for the benefit of providing alternative use. It's, 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 um, when, when Jack was suggesting it, you think, well, they could maybe sell one of their palaces. And I, I'm, I'm like you, Richard. I mean, seven palaces just feels taxpayer-supported, taxpayer-funded. Uh, it, 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 it doesn't sit right with me. Richard Murphy, pleasure as always. Uh, and I just noticed just before we go to the break, a message from David who says, why attack the king and not the three million plus UK millionaires? Well, the answer to that, David, is I don't, directly fund the other three million uh, the, the three million millionaires out there I, I am funding the king and I'm not happy about it maybe you are